Today, essentially, is going to be a review on dynamic memory allocation because we're going to work on it a lot as we are going through the semester. And also, we're going to have one more concept that you haven't, uh, that we haven't taught you. So that's going to get covered, too. It's going to take around an hour, less than that, maybe, and then we're going to go back to our lab, OK? First of all, review on dynamic memory allocation. Secondly, I'm going to shoot anyone who talks in class, OK? All right, with a camera. OK, so all right, so I'm shooting pictures. All right, so, so dynamic memory allocation is essentially, um, like this is when you are not doing dynamic memory allocation. Anybody have a problem with colors? We're OK with colors? Everybody sees colors? You're good? All right. So the executable program is that big green rectangle around the thing. So when you are writing a program, you compile your program, and you create an array in your program, say int A5, the entire array structure exists within your executable. So when you actually run your program, that executable is going to get loaded into the, ra into the RAM, into the memory of the computer, and it's going to run. And it's going to access the array within your executable. And whenever it's done, the executable is removed from the memory, and everything inside of it will be removed too. Therefore, uh, you don't need to worry about arrays when you are creating them or any local variable. When you create them, they're going to be gone when your executable is gone. OK? But recently, we learned that we can use a keyword called new, which uh, this is uh, compile time, which means that integer A5 is within the source code of your program, and it's decided before the program begins. So compiler knows exactly what's inside. If you make the size of that integer 5,000, your executable will be 4,999 integers bigger. OK? That's what's going to happen, because essentially it's going to hold something bigger, right? So the bigger the stuff in. And then we learn a new. A new was runtime, which means you only uh, uh, specified what is that A is, that is one pointer, and when the program is running, halfway through your program, you decide to have five integers. And that's when the compiler is going to give the, the operating system, through the request of your program, is going to give you the five. So the second one becomes dynamic. So the executable is much smaller, as you see. You have only a pointer in there, and when you say integer pointer a is equal to new int 5, it actually occupies five integers in the shared area of memory that we call heap, and it's going to point the address of a into that one. Now, when the program ends, the executable is removed from memory, correct? And if you don't take care of this, that's going to remain in heap forever. When we say forever, in computers means until you reboot your computer, OK? And that's when you call Rogers or Bell and you say, uh, my modem doesn't work. They tell you, tell you, unplug and count to 15 and put it back in. That's what happened. Because they had memory leak, it keeps running and keeps occupying the memory with all the garbage. And time comes and there's too many garbage. The memory is all dead, gone. And then you re reboot and everything goes back to normal and it starts from the beginning. So that's uh, uh, dynamic memory allocation that we talked about, but now we just kind of visualize it. The next thing that we need to, to know is that what usually goes wrong when we are doing dynamic memory allocation, what procedures should be taken to have memory allocation run smoothly with no memory leak and problems or crashing? Usually, uh, one of the major reasons that we actually have memory problem is you have, you're using an uninitialized pointer. You say integer pointer m data in here, OK? You don't set it to anything. And then you say m data 5 is something. Or you say target of m data is this and that. So essentially, you are asking for the value to be placed five types after m data. Well, because m data is pointing somewhere else in the memory, as you see the arrow goes somewhere we don't know where. You are actually putting stuff in someone else's memory. Uh, or the memory that doesn't exist, your address is too big, bigger than the size of your memory. And that's when operating system uh, stops you and tells you, oh, you're out of your segment. Segmentation fault, and your program crashes. OK? So that's the first thing. 
you always, if you are having a pointer, you have to always make that pointer point to what it's supposed to before you do anything. Next thing that is uh, uh, very important uh, to talk about is using a null pointer. We always, it's kind of a rule that we put, and we say that if you don't know what's going to happen to your pointer next, set it to null. That's the rule of dynamic memory allocation. You have a pointer. You have no idea what's going to happen to this pointer next. If you don't know, set it to null. That's the rule. Remember what I just told you. You created a pointer. If you know what's going to happen to the pointer later, then you're going to take precautions accordingly. But if you have no idea what's going to happen to this pointer, you immediately set it to null. So anybody using it can detect and know that this pointer is not pointing to anywhere and therefore all the things that are going to go through. Yes, sir. So, Professor, is there any difference between initialize a pointer to a new pointer and uh, no byte at the zero position? Oh, okay. Th that's the difference between what you, are so, what, you, what you just said was the difference. You're talking about a string, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is a null pointer now, okay? So essentially, I'm sorry because I don't have a touch screen over here. I'm using my mouse to draw this. My apologies. So this, this, okay, let me just make it better. This is a pointer P, okay? And it's null which means it's not pointing to anywhere. What is it? It is an envelope that has no address on it. It says it's not going to go in. It's, it's, a, it's nothing in it. It's an address that has nothing in it, which means you are actually telling it points nowhere. I haven't said this yet. Okay. Another scenario is this, where you actually have a pointer And this pointer points to one thing only, or many things, it doesn't matter. One thing or many things. Ugh, it's like I'm a two year old, not, two, not even two years old, six months old with a crayon. Okay, seriously, look at that. Okay, this is <laughs> even worse than that. So, this is actually a point that is pointing to a piece of memory, right? This piece of memory, let's assume it's a string. When you want to set a string to tell there, are, there is no data in a string, what do you do? You set the first one to null, right? And that's not a null pointer. That's null. What we have here is this, null PTR. What you have here is, null point, is a null value, which is essentially a single code backslash Zero <laughs> and a backslash over here, <laughs> and two eyes and a nose and a smiley face. All right. So what you have in here now? So in here you have something. You have memory allocated, but there is nothing in the memory. Over there you have no memory at all to have anything in it. You have a in here you have a pocket but there is no money in it. In here, you don't even have a pocket to put money in. Got it? Beautiful. All right. So that's using null pointer. Now, using null pointer causes another thing. So if you set actually something to null, OK, and without checking to see if it's null or not, assume that it's pointing to somewhere and try to put something in it, that's when you get an exception called null pointer assignment. So whenever you see your program crashed and it said null pointer assignment, it means you were a good boy, you were a good girl, you actually set the pointer to null, but you didn't check to see if it's null or not before using it so you can actually allocate memory for it. So null pointer, segmentation fault, it means garbage in a pointer. You are at an area that it doesn't belong to and try to write or read from it. Okay, null pointer assignment, you have a pointer, it's not pointing anywhere, and you want to use it. All right? So another thing is going out of range. Another thing that causes problem is going out of range, that you actually do your uh, memory allocation or whatever you have. And like 
most of memory allocations you keep track of the size because you don't know com there is no way for C compiler to tell you when I say C it's mean C++ remember that C C++ potatoes potatoes okay uh, so just uh, so when you are using C or C++ and you have a pointer an allocated memory that that pointer is pointing to it C has no idea what is the size of the allocation it will not prevent you to go over it over the size of the thing. It will not do any kind of prevention like that. Therefore, most of the time when you do dynamic memory allocation, you need a separate variable to keep the size in, to know how many things you allocated, so you can check. One of the most common mistakes with rookies, I'm getting dizzy with that monitor. Yeah, but it's okay. All right, so, so one of the most important, one of the most important and common type of mistake is that when you allocate n entities, you try to access the nth one, okay? Let me tell you, when you ask, let's say I have five fingers, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, I don't have a fifth. If I had a fifth one, it was a very awkward type of hand with an extra thing over here, pinky over here. So you, when you ask for something, because indexes start from zero, okay, because index starts from zero, you always have the actual indexes one less than size. That's one of the reasons. So again, you get segmentation fault. If you are using regular array, then you are overwriting your own executable. So program's gonna do crazy stuff. We checked one today. Okay, so program's gonna do crazy stuff. It's not gonna behave properly because you just overwrote the code of your program, okay? And if you are doing dynamic memory allocation, you're just out of the boundary of your segment, you get segmentation fault. So you have to always make sure that you are not going out of the allocation size and you are not delinking your computer while I'm teaching. All right. So for those who don't understand what I just said, I was, I was just doing it. I'm here. I'm a very, very, I, I easily get distracted. Let's put it that way. Okay. Next one, memory leak. We cause memory leak. Memory leaks are usually silent murders, okay? They don't tell anything right out of hand because there is no way for compiler or operating system to detect it, okay? So what happens, you have a pointer that is pointing to a piece of memory. You have allocated it, and you allocate another piece of memory in that pointer without deleting the old one. And this is what happens. So that M data, the blue pointer over here, is pointing to the blue uh, uh, allocated memory with size of seven. And then you say, okay, seven is not enough, I want bigger. So what you do, you actually allocate 14 units of whatever you have, and then you put the address on the in M data. So that old seven blue ones are all lost. And they remained in memory. Another reason to call Rogers and they tell you to unplug, wait for 15 and put it back in. Another type of memory leak. So essentially that memory is always lost and you cannot Find it. You don't know where it is. Okay. Uh, correct state of an unused pointer in dynamic memory allocation is always setting it to null. And that's the main thing that you test. Of course, you're going to set the size to zero, but that zero means nothing. What? It's one of the biggest mistakes that you have when you create, when you set something to a safe empty state to have five conditions for it. Safe empty state is a unique thing. Stick to one flag and check that one flag only. And set that one flag to, to an invalid thing if you want to set something to. So if you have five different pointers in a class, okay? If you have five different pointers in a class and you want to set the object into a safe empty state, pick one of them and only have that one as the, as the flag of your safe empty state. Or if you think later on, five years from now, because there are five, you don't know which one you chose, create a Boolean flag, call it safe empty state, and set it to true when you are in safe empty state. Don't check five different things, because there are so many different scenarios where you're, that when you have five different dynamic memory allocation where you want to put your object into safe memory state. Because safe memory state is a, un stake. State is a unique thing, it's always better to have one flag and have a function that puts everything in safe state and sets the flag to true. 
and whenever you want to check to see if it is in a, in a thing, you don't have to say this one or that one or that one, if this one and that one and this. You don't need to do that. You simply say, is the flag true? I'm in a safe empty state. If it's not, I'm not. Okay? Keep the flag updated depending on what happens to your program and go through. So that's the correct state of uh, dynamic memory allocation. So next thing is uh, uh, the size, okay? So you always have the size somewhere. So you know exactly how many things you allocated. And that's a, a no-brainer. We know, and there's no problem with that. And yeah, remember, when you are allocating something in certain way, you always re delete in the exact same way. This is allocated, uh, is allocating M size, that is seven types, and puts the address in M data, right? Because it's seven, it's an array, correct? So when you delete it, you've got to make sure that you actually delete an array not a single one. And that's the correct way of deleting it. And then immediately after, you set it to null. OK? If you don't know what's going to happen to it next. Usually these type, when I say you don't know what's going to happen next, that's usually when it ha when happens. Usually it happens when you have a function that sets things to a safe empty state, or you have a function to deallocate, and you don't know where this function is going to get called next. You don't have a sequence of things happening. If something like, if you are doing the deallocation in a separate function of its own, always make it null after. So you can detect it. Whenever the function is called, it deallocates and sets it to null so everybody knows it's, not, it's, it's deallocated. Okay? So have it that way. But of course, if in one routine you are deleting and immediately you want to allocate, then why you set it to null? Because you know what's going to happen next. You don't need to go through nullification of the thing. But again, always remember. Always remember, if by mistake you delete not the same way that you deleted, which means I deleted them that are without the square brackets, you are only deleting the first element. The rest become memory leak again. OK? The rest of that becomes memory leak, which we don't want to. So when reusing pointers, always make sure they are actually not being used. It's an extremely important thing. That's what I was telling you. So always check if M data is not equal to null pointer, that means it's doing something. Take care of unfinished business with allocated memory, whatever you're supposed to do, okay? With that memory, copy it somewhere or whatever. And then after you're done, you free the memory. Free memory means delete, right? You delete it, and then you do the dynamic memory allocation again. So always take care of the old data. If you don't, if the data is garbage, you don't need it. Ah, don't do anything. Just delete it. You don't even need this if statement anymore. If you know that the data it's in there is garbage and you don't need it, just delete it. Be done with it. There's no problem. Okay. So. Whenever, yeah, and then reuse the memory and do the dynamic memory allocation with the new size. So the very first thing that you do, you take your own finished business, you free the memory, and after you free the memory, you allocate it to the new size. And then you always stay within the allocated memory size so you don't go off. And if you do that, hopefully you're not going to have any memory leak. Are we okay with this? This was just the first two slides that I showed you. We have much more to go through, but this is enough for today to start coding. Uh, oh, all, no, I don't put anything on Blackboard. All the slides are going to be in notes. So if you actually see the, like, the recording is on YouTube from the other lab, and the, the, the slides are in the notes in the other lab, I think A section, it's in there. But I'm going to post these two, and I'm going to put all the slides, because this one had notations on it, right? I drew that stupid thing over there when I was talking. So I'm going to put those things up, too. And also, the recording has the, the slides. Now, it's not finished. Don't start doing your lab. We're just going to start now, OK? The lecture's just starting. Now I'm going to put all those things we're going to put all those things in use. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a class called string. You know that C++ has a class called string, right? We have a string header file from C. You say include C string. 
If by mistake you forgot that C and you forget that C and you write include string, then it's going to include a class, a module for something called string, which essentially encapsulates the C string so you don't have to go through that stupid size of the string and a null at the end and things like that. Th this string is a very good thing to teach. So we're going to create our own class for a string that uses a, a C string safely. So essentially, it encapsulates, it encapsulates a C string. What is the meaning of encapsulation? Who's going to be volunteer to answer that? You hide the internal mechanics from the user. You hide the internal. Wow, I should write that down for my next lecture. So, uh, what did you say? One more time. One more time. You hide the internal mechanics from the user. You hide the internal mechanics from the user. Mamma me, that was beautiful. Okay, so so, one more. One more what? What mistakes? What mistakes access direct direct to the data the members, so you have to access through the. Oh function. yeah, yeah, it 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 exactly because it hides the internal mechanics of the thing. It restricts the access to internal data, so nobody can go and put extra characters at the end of something where it's not supposed to. Are we okay with this? Let's do it. So when we are dealing with when we are dealing with a with a character array as a string. What is mystery for us over there? First of all, it's the size. Because you're always like asking, okay, if I have three, if what is the, like you want to put someone's name. What is the maximum size for a name? I have to go 71 and 31. So you, go, you, you put the maximum size and then you only use the first three characters all the time. We don't want that. We want our string to always be precise to the size that we want. So the first question, at the end of the class, can you see the code up there? All right, so what we need to do is, first thing we need to do is to have a pointer to be able to create a dynamic array of characters. Therefore, we're going to have character pointer and that over here. Another thing that you notice in your lab, that the lab is completely written by someone else. You see that all the m data thingy that I put, he's putting a different thing over there. Get used to it. Different type of supervisors ask you for different type of style of coding. Now you have to write the lab the way they want it. See what it is and write it that way, okay? So the next thing I need to know, you always, uh, if you want to find out what is the size of a string, what do you do? What, functions do you, what function do you use? What function do you use? Pardon me? C type. No, not at all. C type. I don't even know. I don't remember what it does. C type. What does C type do? I ah, forget it. String length, right? You use string length. String length is a function that we use in C. We don't want that. String length is essentially a loop. When you look at the code for string length, it's a for loop. It starts, reaches to the null, counts how many times it counted, and it returns you the, the number of loops it, it made. That's a very expensive thing. Every single time you want to find the length of something, a loop, 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 we don't want that. So we're going to always have our size updated and have it over here if anybody needs it. And I'm going to call it M size. Oh, that's a new version of size. And that's another new version of size. Okay, size. Okay, so German version of it. All right, are we okay with this? All right. So next thing, next thing. The very first thing we need to do is just create a string that has nothing in it for your attention. We're going to create a string that has nothing in it. So it's not that it's, no, actually, you're going to see the class that I'm going to create is not going to have a safe empty state. Because I'll try to have all the precautions taken for everything to always be in a valid state. So I'm probably not, I'm not going to, I don't know. The way I designed it for the other two labs, I never needed it. So I'm telling you in advance. Maybe in next class we'll find out we need it, we're going to add it. For now, we don't. So. I'm going to say an empty string is the one that we talked about. I'm going to actually have an array of one character, and that one character will be null. And I'm going to do it right now. So to create a string just like that, what type of a constructor do I need? When I want to create something just as is without anything being passed to it, we need a I, I don't know. <laughs> Is it default? 
Default constructor or. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Default constructor or. The class name? De default constructor or. I was going to say default constructor. Default constructor or. No argument constructor. Okay, remember, no argument constructor. They call it no argument constructor or default. Default constructor sometimes gets uh, confused with other types of constructors. That's why in books you see they say no argument constructor. So we're going to create a no argument constructor to be able to just create a string like that. So I'm going to say string, and I'm going I'm to put nothing in there. I'm not going to pass anything to it. And let's just create it over here. So string. String. As you see, I am not creating this stuff like before. I'm, I have everything ready and I just fill it in. You know how a module is made. I'm not going to keep repeating it over and over and over. You know how it's done. So I have it over there. So if I have, if I have a string that has nothing in it, what is the size? Zero. So I'm going to say m size is zero. And my M data is going to point to one character, and I'm going to specifically make it an array of characters, but only one. Okay? Because when I want to delete, I don't want to have different types of delete, depending on what type of thing I have. So it's got to be an array of characters, but only one. Of course, I'm going to put a new in front of it. Okay? And I will make sure that M data zero is null. Ta-da. So I have now a string class that is empty. It doesn't have anything in it. And the size is exactly what it is. One for the null byte more than the size. Size is zero. It's got to be one, right? That's the amount of things that are allocated. So that's what we're going to do. Immediately right after, you create the first constructor, you create the destructor. To make sure if you're testing it, you are not leaving garbage behind. No memory leak. I want when something gets created to get destroyed. So immediately right after, I'm going to have the destructor created. OK? And I'm going to say string, string. And what do I do over here? Do I need to check to see if now, uh, 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 what do we call it? Uh, M data is null. No, why do I care? If it's null, delete is not going to do anything. Delete detects the null already. That's within the mechanism of delete. Delete checks. If it's null, it won't do anything. If it's not null, it's going to delete it. Beautiful. So I do the delete. So I'm going to say delete and allocate exact, deallocate exactly. I allocate it and I'm going to say m data. Okay? Now, this is one of those points that I, read, that I said. Do, I, do you think I need to set m data to null pointer? OK. If you don't know the answer, you say yes. OK? But if you know the answer, think about it. OK? Have you ever eaten in disposable plates? You were in a party, they gave you. How many people actually wash those disposable plates? They just throw it away, right? I know it's very nice and uh, uh, environment friendly to wash them so they get recycled properly and easily. But you don't you just throw it away, right? That's what you did. This okay, that, that brings me for another microphone moment. Okay, okay. When, now it's this side. Please don't say anything else. I, I, I'm too far from this side. When is a constructor called? When, with respect to lifetime of an object, when is a destructor called? I don't know. When is a constructor called? You guys I, know, I know, but for some reason when I come, I'm, I'm a scary person, so. It's called default. When? When? Time. As, so, as soon as the program starts. As soon as the object gets created. So constructors are called right after the object is created. So the it is an impossibility to do something between the two. Right immediately after the constructor is called, sorry, the object is created, the constructor is called. Now, when is the destructor called? When you want to destroy. When you want to destroy or? Want to free up memory? When it, no, no, no. When is it called timely? Uh, the exact opposite of what I just said. <laughs> 
just now, like a second ago? Two seconds ago, I said <laughs> when the constructor is uh, the exact opposite of that. Uh, when, yeah, when you want to destroy it. Not when you want to, when something gets destroyed. When an object gets destroyed right before the moment of destruction, when the object is going to get exploded, go to the heavenly, heavenly thingy, completely get destroyed and gone, that's when the destructor is called. Why the heck do I need to make the pointer now when the object's going to die? Who cares something that's going to go to garbage if it's clean or not? Why do I need that? I said when you don't know what happens after. I know what happens after. It's going to go to garbage. Why do I need to make the garbage now? Right? So if you don't know, put it there. For now, no problem, no shame in it. Put the data put now pointer over there. You're just going to see me giving you a comment, no need. And you try to find out why. OK? So if you don't know, make it known. It's not going to hurt. OK? But if you actually, if somebody wants to hire you for programming C++ and ask, want to ask you for a sample of your code, do not send that. That means I have no idea what a destructor does. OK? Yes? Our destructor example, you didn't put the delete clause. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference now? I didn't put a delete in the destructor? No. Uh, here in, uh, Did I have dynamic memory allocation? No, I don't. Why do I need a destructor when I don't have a dynamic memory allocation? Destructor, as I mentioned, destructor is called when the object is dying. Now, if that object has an unfinished business, you implement the destructor. Otherwise, why do I need a destructor? It's like a regular array, when the array is regular and it, uh, the executable is gone, the array is getting destructed, right? You don't need to take care of it. Destructors are needed. Let me just put it in perspective. Like another interview question. Another interview question. When do we need a destructor for a class? That's going to ask you. They're going to ask you. Your answer will be whenever the class has resources outside of its scope. If a class has resources outside of its scope, I need a destructor. Otherwise, everything is within the class. When the class is gone, it's going to go with it. It's exactly like that executable thing that I mentioned. I can actually bring that executable and say, this is a class instead of an executable. It would have been the same. Uh, so in my program here, I don't have any delete clause, and my program is working. Oh, that is one of those is workings that I want to shoot myself. Those, that is working is the, the exact same thing. It's working, but it's not working properly. OK, I can come over here and teach upside down when I'm hanging off the ceiling. It starts. It's going to be a little weird, but it works. OK, it's the same thing. So your program has memory leak. Every single time you execute that program, a little bit of memory or your memory is wasted until you reboot your computer. It works. Again, I told you. What did I tell about dynamic memory allocations memory leak? It's a silent murderer. Remember what I told you? You don't hear any message from it, but after a while, you see little by little your mouse is not moving as fast as it used to, and then it goes on. My computer is getting slower and slower, and then you reboot. Everything worked perfectly until you run your program 50 times more. Uh, that said, no, no, that blue screen of death is a completely different thing that's not going to talk about it. OK, are we OK down to here? All right, so this M data is because I'm writing this code for a sample, I'm just going to comment and I'm going to say no need. You go figure out why no need. No need in the structure. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? 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 One, are we okay? Two, sold. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, I want to actually be able to display this thing. Okay. So let's display it. To display, you know how I write my function for display? I return O stream, so I can reuse the thing. OK, so O stream. O stream over here, I have the thing. Again, please do not use using namespace in a header file. Big no no. If you have objects that need a namespace, you qualify them individually. STD over here, O stream, and it's going to be display. Oh, display. That's a new version of display. Display. And I'm gonna and it's a constant because I don't want to change the object, right? Because I don't want to change the object, I'm gonna make it a constant. And I'm gonna create the exact same thing over here. All right? So and I have using namespace std over here, so there is no problem with that. I just have to mention that this 
uh, display belongs to a string and it's a constant. Now, in here, I can just, what I can do is just this. I can just do C out M data. Just show the data, right? Because I am designing my code in a way that data is never null. When the object is getting created, it is allocated to something. But because I don't trust myself, I don't trust myself, I'm going to put an if statement in here. In case I do something wrong, this is going to give me a clue. What do I do? I'm going to say if m data not equal to null pointer. I know that this is going to be always true. It is always not equal to null pointer. In here, I'm going to print an error message that never happens. If this happens, ooh, something went bad. I have to actually go see what is wrong with my logic. So in here, I'm going to say C out, fatal error, error, I don't know, call the police. <laughs> okay? So, so whenever you see that message, you know something went wrong. Okay, actually, don't do that. People call the police. Okay, okay. So everybody, they actually trust the they trust the computer so much. So fail error. I'm gonna say over here number one, number one, contact the programmer. <laughs> okay. So so and whenever you see something happens, you go look for number one. See where you don't number one. That's the place the the thing went wrong. Okay. So this will never happen ever. So because of my design, this will never happen. Will never happen unless pigs fly. Okay? So something like, oh my goodness, like it's like very bad thing. Are we okay with this? All right? So that's going to be the thing. Now I can test my program. I have a destructor. I have a display. Life is beautiful. I'm going to come over here in the tester, and I'm going to cre create a string. S. And I'm going to say, um, what do I do? I'm going to say, uh, C out. I'm going to put, I'm going to put an asterisk in here. OK. Then I'm going to say, S dot display. And I'm going to display. And I'm going to show another asterisk and go to new line. OK. So when I run this program, it should show me two asterisks side by side with nothing in the middle. And three years later, when it compiles one line of code, there's build errors. <laughs> OK, let's see what are the errors over here. All right. Must return. Oh, bad boy you are. Yes, of course it should return a value. Return C out. Yeah, I have to return C out. OK? I forgot to do that. You write one line of code, and it has an error. And it works beautifully. OK? It never has been. Printing nothing such a sweet message. Anyways, so it works perfectly and it works properly. Now, the next thing I'm going to do to be able to actually set the thing to our string and see if it works, OK, and do all the stuff that it's supposed to do. So to actually do that, all right, to actually do that, I need a constructor that accepts one argument. So I'm going to say string uh, constant character pointer C string. So that's the thing. That, so I can actually set my class to a C string. OK? How do I do it? I'm going to create a constructor saying string string constant character pointer SDR. I'm not going to put C strings too long. C string is for your prototype. You put something over there. Nobody looks at your C++ code to see what your class does. They look at the header file. And your header file says constant string added a C string, so it's printing a C string. Good. I know, I know. In here, I just paste SDR quick, easy. OK? So what do I need to do? First thing I need to do over here is to find out what is the size of the memory I want? I already included C string for that, so I'm going to do it. So the very first thing I'm going to do will be M size. I need to know what is the size. SDR len of SDR. So that's the size of my string. Actually, size is not a good name. 
Length is better. It's length, not size. Size is one more. Length of the string is what I want. Let me fix that. In the other class, it was size. Now I just said that nah, it's a length. It's not a size. So, so let's control H that. M size, I'm going to make it M length. OK, in current project, I'm going to say change everywhere. Replace all. And three occurrences, that's fine. So M length is actually equal to SDR length. That's better, OK? So M length is equal to SDR len. Now that I have the length of the string, I can allocate memory for it. Therefore, I'm going to say M data will be set to new character uh, size of M length. And I know I have to add one because of that null character that always causes trouble. I'm going to do it here so the user of my string class, that is another programmer, doesn't have to deal with it. OK? Hiding the mechanics of the thing behind the thing. <laughs> I'm going to call you a mechanic from now on. All right. <laughs> All right, so that's that one. So now I can comfortably SDR copy uh, into mdata the string that is coming because I know it's the exact size. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay? One? Are we okay? All right. That's a mistake you made, didn't it? No, Isn't it? Okay, so so that's the thing. So now I have this. Uh, did I need to check to see if M data is null over here or something before doing this? No, because the object is just getting created. All the stuff are just coming to life. I don't, of course it's garbage in it, but I know it's garbage. I can overwrite it. Maybe. Too late. You want to take a picture? And oh, no, I missed it. Anyways, so now I can actually create another one. I'm going to call it R, and I'm going to make that R being equal to hello there. How are you? OK? An assignment at the moment of creation. An assignment at the moment of creation is? Uh, I forgot the level one. Anyone? It's a constructor call, but what type of constructor call? Pardon me? Uh, the argument. argument. One argument. One argument. So when you have an assignment at the moment of creation, an assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor from the same type. I have a constant character string over there. Da, 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 line number 12. Constant character string will be called. Therefore, I can now say, actually, let's create another function too. Uh, let's, let's finish this first. OK, so now I can actually, uh, I'm lazy. I'm just going to copy this, paste it, and I'm going to put R over here. All right, so the first one's going to be S, and the second one's going to be R. And my R over there will have that value in it, hopefully. And three years later, when it compiles and runs, I'll, we see, I'll see that the second one has, hello there, how are you? Are we OK with this? And of course, you can walk through this to make sure to, to see. Now, take a look at this. Let's actually walk through it as something important. Which one of these two, which one of these two are get, getting created first, S or R? S, right? So let's, when we call this, so if I actually run this program step by step, I'm pressing F10 now. Okay, I pressed F10, so it's starting to run. And now I'm going to put this at right side and put the, uh, this one at left and bring it to left a little more. There you go. Voila. Okay. So now I'm, now I'm F10. I'm coming to line 7. I'm pressing F11, so it goes to constructor of the no argument constructor over there creates one thing, uh, uh, allocates one character. When you look at it, it's all garbage. It doesn't know. See, that proves that it doesn't know what is the length. You can look at the size of that thing. I just allocated one character, and it shows, it keeps showing until it hits the null. Okay? Now I'm going to put only, I'm going to put a zero right at the beginning. Now if I look at it, there's nothing in it. So I go out. Now R is going to get called, this one. And SDR will hold the value of hello, how are you? It finds the length, puts the length in here. That is 24. Then it's going to put the data, uh, allocate enough data. Again, we have lots of garbage over there. Then it's going to actually copy it over there, and the garbage is replaced with hello, how are you? 
Now I come back over here. It goes displays. Uh, it goes displays the uh, the star, and then shows data that never happens. We know that. See how it comes out. Prints the second one on new line, and it does the same thing with the third one. And finally, when I press F11 at the end, it goes to the to the destructor and destroys the one ha that has hello, how are you in it. So as you see, it is destroying everything in reverse order. Okay? This green marker is the one that had nothing in it. Black marker is the one that had hello, how are you. If I want to remove, I have to remove the top one first. That's why everything goes in reverse order. That's, remember that thing's called a stack. Okay? Stacks are always... Whatever is pushed in is going to be pulled out last. First in, last out. Okay? And that's why first, hello, how are you, will die. And then after that, the one with only but nothing will be dying. And then the program ends. Are we okay with this? All right. Now, two more things. Two more things. First of all, we have a length. Let's get the size. Oh, so I want a, a thing called length. I want to see, I wanted to say size, but we called it length, so let's call it length. I might actually create a query. We call a function that returns data from the thing. We call it a query. So I'm going to create something called int length. And that length is a constant because it's not going to change anything. And I'm going to actually write it over here to tell me what is the length of whatever I have. So int uh, a string length, const, and it simply returns the m length, right? Easy. That, so anybody who wants to know what is the size of my string, there is no string length required. It just returns the size, poof, it has the size very quick, very fast, it doesn't have to loop through anything. Another thing, what if somebody wants to use my class with legacy old-fashioned C stuff. They want to be able to copy the data out if they want to. I give them access to that too, no problem. I'm going to create a function called C string, and I'm going to return the address start in M data. But I'll be wise, I'm going to send the constant one out. So they can only read it. They cannot write into it. They can see what the data is, but they cannot change it. So it's going to be a constant character pointer. I'm going to call it C string. So if anybody wants to know what is the C string equivalent of this one, they can call this function. So this constant character over here that is being returned is saving my data. But then I have to protect the class from myself shooting myself in the foot, which means the second const. So first const is protecting me from other people, not the person who's writing the class. The second const is protecting me from myself not to change the class by mistake in a function that I'm not supposed to. So in here, I'm going to say const, character pointer, string, C string, const, and all I need to do is return M data. OK? And because my system is designed and everything is always have a value, we have no problem. Life is beautiful. It is going to work. Now, uh, now. Did I? Bad boy I am. Deconstructor. I haven't heard that for a long time. Yeah, those people who speak correct English say there is no word called destructor. So call it deconstructor. <laughs> okay. Anyways, are we okay? So destructor or deconstructor, as uh, my friend says over here. This. Uh, OK, this uh, thing I forgot to put it over there. Let's run it and let's see what happens. Now if I run this beautiful program of my, oh, actually, what I can do over here, I can actually put the size too. So now I can say over here, uh, I can do something like this. So oops, not that. Seriously? Give me two seconds before the question. So in here, I'm going to say s dot length. And then I'm going to show the thing. In here, the same. I'm going to say s dot length s dot length. So first I'm showing the length, then I'm displaying what's inside. And also I can do c out. 
uh, uh, r dot uh, c string. So I, I can access the string inside the r and actually show the value. So now if I, if I run this beautiful program, I see oh, how many different ways I can actually access that, the data inside the string. So if anybody, oh, no, errors again. Uh, no standards in using, oh, stupid compiler. OK. This is one of the things that, yeah. All right, so now if you look at this, uh-oh, 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 I made a mistake. What is my mistake? I printed S for the second one, too. I was supposed to put R. The second one is R's length, not AS, right? So run it one more time and look at it. So I have zero length over here, 24 over here. Hello, how are you printed separately over there, all right? And the next thing I need to do over here is to be able to reset something to other values. Halfway through my program, I want to set the string to something else. I don't want to just always say, hello, how are you? I'm going to put something else over there, right? So what I need to do over here is to be able to set this thing to something. To set it, what do I do? I create, the func create a function called set, all right? So I'll create a function called set. Now, my question is this. What should set return? Nothing. Nothing. That's right. Because I'm setting it, I don't need to return anything. But I have this habit of C++ programmers. Whenever I want to return nothing, I return a reference of the current object. So set can be used in a weird way. Also, you'll see what I mean. Exactly like my display. You see my display is returning O stream, so I can actually continue displaying stuff afterwards when I'm using I don't have to write another C out, okay? I can do the same thing with set. So whenever in a class you see it is returning nothing, so maybe it's a good idea to actually return the object itself out. So you can use the return type of C out to continue doing something afterwards. So in here I'm going to actually return a string. It is nothing, really. I'm just returning, the so set after it's being called can impersonate its owner, okay? Set after it's called can be its owner. So I'm going to call it set. Of course, set needs a constant character uh, C string. Pardon me? I'll show you. It, it does something. It's cool. It does something very cool, actually. I love it. You'll see it soon. All right, so now we're going to come over here. Now let's write that set thingy. <clears throat> so let's write the set. I'm going to write a uh, string, reference, string. And in here it's going to be called set. And it receives a constant character string over here. Now, this is different with setting that I have done in the constructor. Now set already has a value. Because it's halfway through lifetime of this of, of a string, string already has something in it. It's the memory leak situation now. So before I need I, I be able to set this to anything, I have to wipe the old thing out. Right? Set is not called at the moment of creation. It can be called at any moment. So your string exists with data that is already pointing. Therefore, I should not just set it. I have to first make sure that the old thing is deleted. Right? Now, do I need to set it to null after? No, I know what I'm doing now. I know what's going to happen. Right now, I'm going to do the rest of the stuff. So again, like the other one, first I'm going to see what is the length of the string. So I'm going to set m length. I'm going to set m length to str len of string. Then I'm going to set m data. If I can type it, two, really, two new uh, character m length plus one. And finally, sdr copy m data. 
SDR. I'm, I'm having a feeling of deja vu. Didn't I do this before? I did. Never, ever repeat the same code twice. Sometimes repeating the code are, are a little bit fuzzy. You cannot really recognize that they are repeated. But sometimes they're obvious. Like this is like, oh my god, the same thing, right? So now, what am I doing in those three lines? What is happening in those three lines? The volunteer. Can somebody tell me what happens in those three lines? Why are everybody looking at the board? Nobody's looking at me. You already answered. You, you are the mechanic. <laughs> what am I doing here? You're pretty much calling the cons No, no, explain what happens at lines 19 to 21 in English. <laughs> in English. Yeah. You're grabbing the length of the string, uh -huh. uh, creating a spo uh, creating a new character of that. That's C, that's not English. <laughs> you're what? yeah, you're allocating allocating memory, memory and and copying. Thank you. Data. I am allocating and copying, correct? Yes. I am allocating and copying. I am Allocating and copying some string, right? That's what I'm doing, correct? So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to come over here, right? Where is that? In here, I'm going to say void string allocate and copy constant character pointer string and simply grab this code and bring it right into here. There we go, right? And instead of doing it, I'm going to say allocate and copy str. And in here, I'm going to say allocate and copy str like this. Well, it actually corrected it. All right, and look, actually, I am doing allocate and copy over here, too. I am allocating and copying nothing, correct? So let's do that. Allocate, this is the one that I said, you are doing it, but you don't know. Right? I'm allocating and copying nothing. So what does allocate and copy will do at line eight? It comes over here, gets the length of the string. What is the length of the string? Zero. Zero goes to length. It's going to allocate one, copies that one in here, and done. OK? So now look at my code. If somebody looks, they're going to say, when constructor with one argument is called, this allocates and copies. When set is called, first it deletes the data, then allocates and copies. So it kind of explains how things are done properly. Are we OK with this? All right. I have one more thing to cover. Should I cover it or go for a break and come back? Go for a break. Remind me to resume recording, please. Now, I just added the test for those things. So, so what happens over here, I have our display. That was the last thing that I, said, that I had at line 12. I, did, I printed using the C string. Now I set R to he ha the hoo hoo with he he. So R is being set to that. Then I'm showing the length again and displaying the R. And then at the end, I'm setting. This is what I, why I returned this. We see this return, this over here that I forgot to put? So set returns a reference of its owner and returns this. So I can set and immediately display after without writing the next line. I can say s.set.display because set returns s. s is its owner, right? Set returns S, so immediately after I can do a display. That's a good thing about returning the reference of the current object, which is target of this. Now, if I run this beautiful program, this is how it's going to work. And now, after showing you that it works, I'm going to actually write a piece of code that looks very OK, but it's going to crash the code. And we're going to fix it.
So let's say, you see, uh, remember I told you about repeating code? Remember? I told you repeating code, right? So repeating code. Now I, am, I have repeating codes in here, right? I am putting asterisk around it, correct? To print something, I'm showing the length, then I'm putting asterisk around. So I can put a function for that. So I can say void uh, length and asterisk. Okay, and in here I'm gonna say string. Uh, what do I put over here? Because uh, I have s over there again. Um, I'm gonna put a. <laughs> okay, all right. Now I'm gonna copy this code that shows the length and asterisk around it. Guys, I wish these guys could just not talk for a second. Ooh. All right. And I'm going to say, and they don't even listen to me. And they keep talking. Still, they're talking. Can you believe it? Do not talk. All right. All right. So length and asterisk shows the length. Asterisk displays asterisk, right? So instead of, instead of writing this, I can say actually length and asterisk, length and asterisk. And I put, what was that? was S, right? I, sh I put S over there. Then I'm going to put another length and asterisk over here for R. Okay. Length and asterisk. And this is going to be R. This one is just that one. Now I'm setting and another length and asterisk for R again. R dot set, oh no, uh, R uh, length and asterisk, and I'm going to put R again, <clears throat> and <clears throat> I'm going to remove this, and finally, for that set thingy that I had, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say length and asterisk, and I'm going to put the set inside. There we go. Because it's sending this, it's going to send that out, correct? All I did, passing my objects to length and asterisk and let it just display it, okay? Now, if I run this beautiful program of mine, let's see what happens. And if I could... So it started... Hello, how are you? So the first thing worked, second thing, and then the third one suddenly hit the fan and showed me this. Okay? Debug assertion failed. This is your IDE, so I'm going to say abort. This is your IDE actually telling you segmentation fault. Okay? Let me tell you what happened, and I'm going to use my amazing artistic values in here to do that. All right, so we have uh, S over here, and we have, let's say, A over here. Okay, so this is S, and this is A. Okay? Now, S has two things in it. It has a pointer and it has, so it has the pointer that points to whatever it's supposed to pointing and it has the size, correct? These are the two things that it has. Are we okay with this? Now, S, S is pointing to something in here, correct? Are we okay with this? When you pass S to length and asterisk, when you pass S to length and asterisk, it's going to pass S by value to A, correct? So all the contents of S will be copied into A, but not what's outside. So essentially, what happens is this. 
essentially, A will point exactly where S is pointing. Correct? Because it's just copied that. Oh, why did I put that? Shoot. Is that? So let's put this one. A is pointing exactly where S is pointing. Now, when length and asterisk finishes, it ends, string A will be gone, right? The destructor is called. When the destructor is called, this is removed from memory. Now it comes back in and reaches to the end, wants to destroy S, it wants to delete something that is not there. And that's, I don't know what it is, <laughs> assertion. There. So I essentially made a mistake. How do I fix this problem? To fix this problem, I have to tap in the copy mechanism of C++. Tell to C++ to first do not speak in the class. Secondly, tell in C++, see how many times I'm telling these guys and still they're doing it. Anyways, so I have to tap into the copy mechanism of C++ and say, whenever you see an object is going to be copied, it is being copied, right? When I pass the S by value to A, A is actually a copy of S, correct? Then A is going to be a copy of R. And then again, it's going to be a copy of R. And then it's, so this copy keeps happening over and over, right? So if that's the case, I need to tap, in, tap to that copy mechanism. Now, this mechanic, this <clears throat> A thingy, when, it's, when length and asterisk is called, A is actually getting created and being set to S, correct? So at the moment of creation, it's being set to something. What is that? Constructor with one argument, but that one argument is a special one. So what you need to do, you need to say, I want when the constructor is called, and that constructor is accepting one argument that is a type of itself, which is, I have to say it's a constant because I don't want to change it, I want to copy it, string, and to make sure copying doesn't happen again, make it a reference. Then in here, I'm going to call it S. So this is the standard prototype of what we call a copy constructor. A copy constructor accepts a constant reference of its own type. How to implement it? It's two seconds implementation. That fixes everything. So I'm going to say string. String again, and constant, string, reference S. All I need to do is what? Allocate and copy S.C string. Done. Right? I just made a copy of that thing. Because I had a function that I already gave, if, if I didn't have that one, I had to actually write a code. If I didn't have that C string, I, I could have done this too. If I didn't have C string, this I could have done. So either that, because I like to reuse my code, or I would have said M data. Same thing, potatoes, potatoes. I like this one because I'm reusing my code. Okay? So now if I run this, Everything's going to work like a charm. No error. Everything's going to go smooth, perfectly working, and no problem. Because every single time A becomes a copy, when, when it's deallocated, the copy is deallocated, life is beautiful, and nothing goes wrong anymore. And if we want to look at what the sequence of things are when we are actually doing it, <clears throat> that's how to take a look at it. So essentially, this is where it's getting created and when it's being passed to S. So every single time, it is actually printing a copy of the object, not the object itself, which is a very bad thing to do. The correct way of writing this, however, the correct way of writing this length and asterisk so I don't have to have a copy constructor is to write this. 
I'm going to call this good length and asterisk. So a constant reference of the asterisk being passed to it. If I do something like this, oh, length, I didn't make it a constant? I did. Why is it giving me an error? Oh, stupid compiler. OK, const, that's better. There we go. And because my display and length are constant, it's not going to make any problem. Now, if I don't have the copy constructor, the good length and asterisk will work perfectly because there is no copying happening. It is actually A becomes a new name for S, A becomes a new name for R, and so on and so forth. That's why, why we always said when you pass a structure or a class, remember we said passing a structure? In here we are saying class. When you pass a class to a function, make sure you always either pass it by reference or address so copy constructor is not called. It's a very, 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 very expensive thing to do. Because every single time the first one at line 5 is called, a new object is created, dynamic allocation is created, copying is created, then printing happens, then everything has to get deallocated, and the next one. So if I had a loop that these things would happen a million times, I use this function, it's going to be much slower than this function. This function, no copying, nothing happens. Everything goes extremely fast. Are we okay with this? All right. Last thing, this, uh, this is done with DMA, so the rest we'll, go, we'll talk about later. Uh, resizing the memory and stuff, we're going to come to that later. And uh, operator overloading, helper functions, and all those things, we're going to go through them. That's the next day you are coming in. Be, be, be ready and be ready for the quiz for this. Uh, one thing you have in here that people uh, kind of make mistake about it. Uh, one thing I want you to please be aware of is uh, not giving pointers too much credit. Okay? Uh, pointers are nothing but variables. Um, let me just open up a new file in here. Um, or just I'm going to come down here and type it over here. So if you create an integer, if you say integer a, a is a variable of type integer. A does what an integer is supposed to do, right? If I say over here double d, d is a double, and it's supposed to do what a double do, right? Now, if I want to create a, a double pointer p, p is a variable. There's nothing magical about it. Its job is to hold the address of a double. Double D, that D, its job is to actually hold a double value. Double pointer P, its job is to hold an address of a, all right? So if I want to create a reference to that D, what do I do? I'm going to say double reference, let's say DP, and it's equal to D, which means now the double D has two names, DP and D, right? Are we okay with this? You can create a reference to a pointer too. Oh, not DP, DR. Double reference. Okay. Now I can say double pointer, pointer reference, PR, set to P. Now the pointer P has two names. Now, the pointer P has two names. One is PR, one is P. Exactly how you use P, you use PR. No difference. That's what they have done in that copy string thingy that you had, and it was optional. You saw it as a pointer reference. It's because you want to be able to change the reference, and you don't know what a double pointer is, so you pass a reference of a pointer so the value comes back to your program. Okay? You want to be able to modify the value of the pointer. And that's what it does. So that's why we have a double pointer reference, or in that case, I think it's a character pointer reference, right? So remember, reference to a pointer is just a reference to that variable. Don't give it extra credit. Pointers are nothing special. Are we okay with this? All right. Done? I'm going to stop the recording. Any questions? Okay, let's continue. Oh, what continue? Lab is over. All right, let me stop this.